All right. So what I'm going to do with this dash is I'm just going to take it apart and I want to clean all the contacts and stuff like that and clean the face and clean the plastic covers over the gauges. So we're not going to restore this. We're not, you know, we're not going to get crazy with this. But when I put the new wiring harness on it, I want to make sure that, you know, we don't have any corrosive buildup or anything on these contacts and that we get full continuity. You want to be extremely careful because these screws are basically screwed into plastic bosses molded into the plastic cover and uh, man they break really easy this one has probably never been apart this one is already broken i'm going to try to glue this back on all right other than that guy breaking this piece is in pretty good shape and the biggest thing i wanted to get done is i want to get these so I'm going to put a light polish on these so that I can uh, see the gauges better. Basically, got to squeeze them and push them through. You just want to take your time, go slow with this. You don't want to break anything because you know how expensive this stuff is and it's not easily replaceable. Basically, squeeze it, start to push it through. And then when it starts to come out the other side, you just pull it out. That one's kind of hidden. Well, that wasn't good. I heard it go flying. Found it. Okay. All right, so here's the switch I just took out of the charger dash. And I have this B body dash piece. Um, this would be like in a Roadrunner or a Cornet. And it looks like these are the same. Our auto, yeah, cool. They're exactly the same. This one does rotate, but I'm being gentle because I don't want to break it too. We've got a little bit of corrosion in there and stuff. I'm thinking about soaking this in the Evapo Rust. Then that would take care of any corrosion in there. Here's the problem. As soon as you pull it out, the air hitting it wants to cause it to corrode. So then what I do is I soak it in white vinegar or clear vinegar and that gets all the water and evapor rust and all that kind of crap out of there and I uh, ultrasonic clean it and then we can pull it out. Now it is going to be very, it's going to still be like clean metal and water moisture is going to want to attack it and corrode it. So what I'm thinking is once I do that I think I'm going to like soak it in transmission fluid or something, you know? And then get in here with some grease and grease up all the little gears and stuff like that. Okay, got all our little screws and stuff. So when these guys come out of the evapor rust, they're gonna be really nice and clean. They're gonna wanna flash, start getting moisture and rusting right away. So what we'll do with these guys is um, we'll spray some clear coat on them right away. I did get this clean. Um, the camera wasn't rolling. But anyway, I used a razor blade that is a little on the dull side. I didn't want to use something super sharp because I was afraid it would gouge into the plastic. Well, that looks pretty much brand new. I am, I am happy with that. See it better. That speedometer gauge is just so tore up. Hmm. There's still some scratches in here from the razor blade. Scraping up that sticker. So I'm going to hit it one more time. But I'm not going to get hung up on it if it's still got some. Yeah, still got some. But, I can still see through it pretty, pretty well. So I still have the dash cluster from my 70 charger that burned to the ground. The cluster's pretty melted. Um, I already looked at it earlier for the uh, the dome light potentiometer and it's too melted so it's that part's ruined. But I was wondering if the clock man that's pretty jacked. 
I'm going to go ahead and pull the clock out and just have a look. Or, I'm sorry, at the speedometer. Here's the potentiometer for the dome light. It's ruined though because it's the, the thumb wheel is plastic and it's all melted on the front end. But you know me, I don't throw anything away. Maybe I can use something off of it, you know? I have to force it out dealing with here. God, that's just pretty ugly. It is melted on there. I think we're gonna have to break it, guys. Get it off. It's a little bit melted there, but I might be able to file that. It is turning still. I might try to save this, guys. That might be savable. This guy, I'm just gonna throw it in the trash. That's not, that doesn't even have any aesthetic value for hanging on a wall or anything, you know? Uh, that's just sad. All right, let's have a look here. The plastic cover is pretty shot too, so let's pop that off, and get rid of it. And look at that from the backside. All nader cage. That might be salvageable. I didn't realize I had a tick tock tack in here. I actually zeroed the odometer on this car when I put a new engine in it. Rebuilt 440. I didn't even break in the engine yet. 1400 miles and the thing caught fire and burned to the ground. And I have a feeling if I just, if I put this in the uh, evapor rust, I think, I think it would probably peel the paint off, you know? I'm not sure. You know what, maybe I'll take one, these are, maybe I'll take one of those and try it and see what happens. And if that one survives pretty well, then I'll do the speedometer gauge. I don't know, what do you guys think? It's kind of cool. Actually, the patina on this tack is better than the clock in the 68 dash. That actually looks really nice compared to all the other gauges in there. So I think I might go ahead and put the TikTok in that. And then the speedometer, well, I feel like I ruined this one by trying to polish it. So we'll try to clean one of these. And if it survives, then we'll clean this one and we'll put this one in there. These guys are basically all connected to this electrical board. So like that's one gauge, another gauge, another gauge, the amp meter. So the second one over was the gnarly one. Really easy to come out once you have the cluster out. Loose and then it just falls out. Insulator still looks okay. Get a good look. Let's see how terrible this looks. And let's go put it in evapor rust and see what happens. You guys want to do something fun? Like how to reset your odometer? So we'll do a couple of things. One thing I want to point out, it is illegal to modify your odometer. So this video is going to be for learning purposes only, for restoration purposes only. And what I'm going to do is show you how to reset the odometer. So like in this case, if we do use this speedometer in this car, in the 68 Charger, the 68 Charger shows 32,455 miles. So I want to transfer that number to this speedometer or odometer. Just make sure legally you're required to say whatever odometer reading exceeds the act or actual mileage actually exceeds the odometer reading. But something I've done too in cars, cars where the odometer doesn't match what the car mileage is, is if I put a new engine in the car, I like to zero out the odometer so I know how many miles are on that engine. So this kind of helps you with, uh, with like break-in, you know. In a, in a perfect world, you want to put about 3,000 miles on an engine before you really start romping on it hard, you know. That may not be realistic, but with that in mind, we'll go ahead and set that odometer to zero and then we will reset it to 32,000. And I'll show you how to do that. All right, this is also pretty simple to come out. These two screws. All right, so we got the speedometer out, speedometer gauge out. Now what you have to do is we have to take out the odometer and how it's held in is it's got this little clip. So the cable goes in here and it's basically spinning. It's gonna, it's gonna click off your odometer 
as that guy spins. So this is pretty simple. You just you pull this little clip towards you. It's these little tiny, hopefully you can see that. The clip kind of comes over and hooks onto this side. So you want to push, push those over. So let's put some pressure here like this. Click those guys off the edge. Okay. And voila, it comes off. And we're gonna pull this guy off the rest of the way, but like that. And then here is your odometer. Okay, so this is the front. That was the amount of mileage I put on that motor. We're gonna zero this out. So how you zero it out is you want to kind of hold these little tabs here. See these guys here? You want to hold those guys. That's, that's what keeps everything in place. And then as you spin this around, you can see it ticks up your, your reading, right? Your distance. All right, so we've got 1,437 miles on there and some tenths. And we want all these to be zero. So let's pretend, I'm gonna go ahead and change that first one to some number, and I'll explain how I did it. Okay, let's just say your odometer read that. All of them are not reading zero, right? So to get the number two to zero, you hold all of these guys together, except for when you're gonna rotate to get a number. So we're gonna hold this first one steady, and we're gonna rotate all of these together, and then boom, you have a one. We need to keep going, because we want zero, right? So we'll go one more time, boom, zero, right? Try to keep these guys aligned as much as you can. Okay, so now we have a one there, and we want the one to be zero, so we're gonna hold these two and rotate these three. Ta-da, zero, okay? Now we're gonna hold these three and rotate these two to get, keep going, boom, zero. All right, now we want the three to go to zero, so now we're just going down to this last one. Two, one, zero, and then I'm gonna hold all of them and just turn the end one here. Ta-da, zero. Then we would put our clip back on here, snap this guy back in here. See that hole? So the shaft is gonna go into that hole. And this slides in here. The clip would be holding it in place. And you would have a zero odometer read. All right? So like I said, if you were, if the accurate mileage wasn't on the car anymore and you wanted to do this, like if you had a brand new engine in it, I suppose you can do that. I'm not giving legal advice here, so. <laughs> This is for educational purposes only, for car restoration stuff. This isn't so you can cheat the mileage and say the car's only got a thousand miles on it. You know, it's been stored in a barn the rest of the time. All right, so I want this guy to match what I have over here on the 68 Charger, because I'm likely gonna end up moving using this guy in that cluster. So we want it to read uh, 32,455. So I want to go the opposite direction, rotate it this way. So there's one, two, see I'm holding all these together. This one got away from me, got to catch it up. Okay, holding these together. There's my three. Now I line everything up, okay? And then the next one I want to read two. So I'm gonna go this direction now to go from nine, eight, seven, six, five, 
five, four, three, two. Okay. Okay, now we're all lined up. And now I'm gonna grab these three and these two to go this direction, to go in the up direction. Four. And then I'm gonna grab these four, spin the one, 32, four, five, five. Three, four, five, okay. And then to turn this, so I'm gonna hold all of them now. I'm gonna turn this guy. Thirty-two, four, five, five. So that matches that now. And it's like kind of. We don't care about the tenth mark. We're just gonna leave it like that. Okay. Put this guy back in here. Stick it through that hole. And then it's gonna slide forward. Put this. We need this clip to go like this. push it in and then those little arms snap around on the back side and then no it's not right now I screwed up how I snapped it in all right well it's good you see this right in case you make the same mistake Okay, let's do this again. Just need to get to this part. Okay, what you want to pay attention to is you see this, this edge right here? Those little things we were holding, they need to go in, they need to go over that. They need to fork over it like that, okay? Okay, you can verify on this side. See how that one's high? So it's not on there, right? to push it a little okay boom see that hopefully you can see in there all these little guys are now forked over this plate all right now we just take our little clip here slide it on like so it snaps in 32,450 well it rotated on me 54.9 close enough. So now we've got the mileage from the 68 charger on this guy. Hmm. Oh, I was holding it. That's why. All right. We're going to see what the Evaporust does to that gauge. And if it doesn't destroy it, we'll probably soak the speedometer in there as well. Get it to clean up a little bit. Hopefully look nice. I really uh, screwed the pooch on that one, just taking the polish to it and having the, the black came off and it, I don't know, I don't like how it looks. So I'd rather it look uniform. I really wanna see what's gonna happen to the face of this gauge. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know if that really changed much. I don't know if that's white paint or if that's rust. I'm pouring white vinegar in here. Cover all that. Got hot water going into the ultrasonic. All right, so I got my parts in there. It's in vinegar. And yeah, now I got the ultrasonic with hot water. With ultrasonic for half hour. Let's see what it looks like. Every few minutes or so. I'll come over here and give it a little shake. Well, the verdict is in. It's just too aggressive. It took all the paint stuff off. All right. It looks like it took care of all the corrosion though. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soak that in foil. Let's see how my switch came out. Switch looks nice. All the corrosion is gone. Spins real nice. 
soak that in oil. That's a win. That's a loss. Yeah, I mean, not a total loss. This just, it just means this is gonna have to be restored. So keep it for a later date. I'm gonna go ahead and spray these with a clear coat so they don't rust. So we used vinegar to displace the water so it doesn't corrode. And now I'm gonna use transmission fluid to displace the uh, vinegar because the vinegar being wet is gonna want it to corrode right, right away also. We'll let it sit for a little bit and then we'll, uh, we'll drain it and then let it, let the parts sit out on a rag or something to let all the transmission fluid kind of drain off. And I'm using Duplicolor, gloss clear. All right, so I'm gonna pull the clock out and I'm gonna put the TikTok tack in. Now, only doing it because it's cool. I don't expect it to work. In fact, I'm sure the clock doesn't even work. This clock is actually a really nice looking clock compared to all the other gauges in here. So it's kind of odd this one didn't fade like the others did. But the TikTok is a little more raggedy. So I think it fits better for my Patina charger to put this guy in. And then I'm gonna change the speedometer gauge too. I really wish I hadn't taken polish to it, but now we know. So if you guys are contemplating it, don't take polish to it. Otherwise, it'll make it look uglier than it already is. <clears throat> I probably should have tried polishing this one first as a test because I think it's a little bit worse than this one. So, all right, I'm gonna pull this one out and put that one in. That speedo is just a bit on the too ratty side. All right, I'm not gonna get all hung up over it. I've gotta get this freaking car running, so we need to move on. I'm gonna take some sandpaper to all these contacts. So I have 400 here. like that damn it yeah, I just broke it that rubber gasket was like the only thing holding it on um, all right when I pull this out of the other one I am not gonna take the wire wheel to it it's too fragile this one is so crummy I don't want to put it in the charger so I have another spare dash over here it's gonna be my last backup so I have a complete one for that car my 68 charger has one in it. Complete one's gonna go in there. This is my last spare one. So I'm gonna take it apart. This is basically gonna be the one that supplies all the good parts I need for, for all of them. So I'm gonna have to remember not to screw up. Be gentle with the fuel gauge. Don't put it in uh, vapor rust. You know, all that good stuff. This one's a 69, by the way. 69s look like this. They have this kind of textured, bumpy look to it. The 68s have vertical lines molded. And I think the 70 also uses this, but you can also get wood grain. And I'm not sure, you might be able to get wood grain at 69 too. I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, the fuel, patina looks okay, looks good, we'll match the other gauges, we'll use that. You know, I was thinking about taking the speedometer, but the needle's busted off. 
All right. I guess I'm not taking that. All right, so this is the boss that broke on the cover, on the instrument cluster cover, on the 68 charger. So I've already figured out the original direction. You can kind of see that little piece sticking out that way. It kind of matches up to that piece there. So we know it's gonna go on there like that. I've got this stuff here, JB Weld, it's for um, plastic. I'm gonna go ahead and Use this epoxy, stir this up. This is obviously way more than I need. Now this guy has got a little hole in it. So I want to get epoxy up in that hole. I'm thinking by getting the epoxy up in this hole, we can um, create a better bond, you know? That's probably all I'm gonna need. Boom. Perfect. I'm gonna take it a step further and try to put a little bit of a radius of epoxy around here just to give it some extra strength. This is like in a cavity of the, the cover that's not really, you know, it's not gonna be impeded with anything. You know, basically this is an empty cavity in here, so it's not like when we put it on, something's gonna butt up against it and cause a problem. All right, so that's five minute epoxy. Five minutes we'll start putting everything back together so this is the the dome light switch or potentiometer um, movement feels pretty good in this one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of grease down in here where the thumb wheel contacts this intermediate shaft or intermediate gear here and in here basically all these moving parts basically the old one was so tight and you know dry when I basically turned it it broke the little teeth off of this this intermediate gear so I don't want that to happen again I'm just gonna put some axle grease in here by the way I let this thing drip dry overnight to get all the transmission fluid to drain out of it and uh, it's still a little bit wet but that's okay and making quite the mess but I'm not too worried about it I'm gonna wipe all this down so I cycle it through a few times. Really happy with all the corrosion that came off of that spring and uh, this little copper piece here. And our prongs. I mean, look at how clean those are. I didn't even have to sand these. So what I want to do is put some black weather stripping adhesive in here, a couple spots, just so that it stays in place. Cause I think the gasket kind of helps keep it in place. And without it, I, I'm afraid the lens is going to fall down in the dash and I don't want to take it apart at that point. So weather stripping to hold it in. And then we don't have to worry about it falling. This is that same black weather stripping adhesive that I used to glue in the trunk seal. Super gentle. You don't want to over tighten anything here because these are just plastic bosses on the cover. And if we put too much force in there, we can easily break them and twist them off. But I think the dash looks okay, or the cluster looks okay for uh, you know, a ratty patina car. So 
question is what will work and what won't work.